There'll be some important decisions made tonight before this sellout crowd of 15,000. Some gambles made by both coaches. He's been aching for it. Hey, Dick, he's been wanting to sing this song all year long. Let him get it started. The gambler, huh? The coaches. Excuse me, Kenny Rogers. You got to know when to hold. You got to know when to fold. You got to know when to walk away. And you got to know when to run. And that's the title. The gambler, the coaches, the marvelous men who guide these athletes during the course of a collegiate season. A musical reflection on their role in this important night. You go. promises to be one tremendous championship game for the national intercollegiate basketball title. I don't know what more you could ask. You know, we started this season, what, six months ago? If you'd have tabbed it right then on two of the storybook stories that could have come out of the season, one would have had to be Larry Bird. Here was a guy who could have passed up this season of college basketball and moved on to the pros, but instead he stuck around for an ideal. An ideal that belonged to Terre Haute, Indiana, belonged to Indiana State. And now, after 33 games, he has, as unlikely as it seems, taken that team to within one game of the championship. Conversely, look at it this way. There is Irvin Johnson, a young man who many say this will be his last college game, that he will not be able to resist the lure of the pros, and that Irvin Johnson will indeed move on to pro basketball. That still remains to be seen. But you've got to wonder, we are tonight looking at perhaps the two best passing big men in the entire history of college basketball. And for both of them, right here on this floor, this could be their final ball game. The fans are getting jacked up because they're about to go off the floor. And we are nearing it. Michigan State against Indiana State. Very quickly, let's just run down how they got here. Indiana State, a winner over Virginia Tech and Oklahoma, and then by the skin of their teeth against Arkansas. End of ball. Michigan State, a winner over Lamar, a winner over powerful LSU. And then they beat a very powerful Notre Dame club. And then finally, tonight, last Saturday, came on to beat Pennsylvania. For the opening lineup, let's go to Dan Roberts. For Michigan State University, wearing number 32 at forward, six feet seven inch tall, senior from Detroit, Michigan, Gregory Kelter. For Indiana State, wearing number 42 at forward, six foot seven inch tall, junior from East St. Louis, Illinois, Alex Gilbert. For Michigan State, wearing number 12 at forward, six foot four inch sophomore from Windsor, Ontario, Michael Berkovitz. For Indiana State, wearing number 33 at center, six foot nine inch senior from French Lake, Indiana, Larry Bird. For Michigan State, wearing number 15 at center, six foot seven inch junior from St. Croix, Virgin Islands, Ron Charles. For Indiana State, wearing number 23 at guard, six foot two inch sophomore from Warsaw, Indiana, Steve Reed. For Michigan State, wearing number 11 at guard, six foot two inch junior from St. Louis, Missouri, Terry Donnelly. For Indiana State, wearing number 22 at guard, six foot two inch junior from Chicago, Illinois, Carl Nick. And from Michigan State, wearing number 33 at guard, six foot eight inch sophomore from Lansing, Michigan, Urban Magic Johnson. Welcome, please, the head coach of the Sycamores, Bill Hodges. And a welcome, please, for the head coach of the Spartans, Judd Heathco.
Chad Heathcote, 51 years of age. Indiana State's counterpart, young Bill Hodges at 36. A chance to be a national champion. And one man knows that feeling so well, and you worked a long time, Al, to get there. Well, if uh, Hodges becomes it, he'll be the first rookie coach in 41 years to become the national champ. Set the scene again. Indiana State, only the 10th team in history to enter the Final Four unbeaten. Michigan State, as the Spartans break their huddle, they started slowly, were 5-4 and four after their first nine games, then won 20 of their last 22. And they have two legitimate great players in Johnson and Kelcher, the all-time leading Michigan State scorer. Kelcher is the third man in the ring, and that might be the difference in this game. I think the real key for the fans early is to watch how Bill Hodges decides to match up. Gilbert 42, Kelser of Michigan State 32. They're both 6-7. Michigan State control. Donnelly in the backcourt. The key, many feel, to beating Michigan State is to take the early lead. When the Spartans get in front in a hurry, they're really tough. Johnson traveling. Johnson tripped over a foot, and it belongs to Indiana State. It was Brad Miley, a very good defensive basketball player, and he's the guy going to have that responsibility. 6'8", so there won't be any posted up, Al. 23, Steve Reed, unheralded, but an excellent shooter, a sophomore. And here's the great player, Bird. Reed open. Indiana State takes the early lead. Very interesting that Larry Bird is going ahead and playing the same kind of offense that they would against the man-to-man. -man. I don't think Indiana State's going to be able to stay man-to-man. -man. Michigan State will force him into his own. Ron Charles on a feed from Kelter ties it up. Now watch this double stack down here for Larry Bird to try to get open early. Carl Nix. Rebound Johnson. Johnson with a ball. Oh, oh, he oh and he has fouled. Look at Irvin Magic Johnson. One of the great things that Irvin Johnson can do is out of the zone matchup defense. He's a great rebounder and never has to make an outlet pass because he is the outlet pass himself. Nix cuts him out from underneath, but he made the shot anyway. Look at him. Just a sophomore. Many hope he'll stay around to compete on the collegiate level again next year. And also in the Olympics in Russia. Five to two, Michigan State on the three-point play by All-American Irvin Johnson. Bird, first basket will make him number five all time. Kelser, rebound. Johnson. it out of bounds for Michigan State. Larry Bird also is a guy that can grab it off the boards and take it up court, not as flamboyantly as Johnson does, but he knows what he's doing when he has that ball. Larry Bird's trying to get in the middle of the zone and manhandle Charles in there. Turned over, two on two, Berkovitz. And Donnelly will slow it up. Kelser over the top to Indiana State. And you notice his matched up with Kelser, Larry Bird, really taking on a big assignment, both ends of the floor. I thought, I thought they put Bird on Charles because, he, you know, he's not expendable. But Bill Hodges is coming right at them. He's playing his game. Dumps it off to Gilbert. Bird's going to try to move through the matchup zone, taking men with him. It's awful difficult not to follow him through because when he gets it, he can make the play. Johnson to Kelser. The academic All-American can't hit it. Rebound, Bird. Indiana State has this first opportunity well after the opening bucket to take and regain the lead. Bird, 20-footer. And a foul on Donnelly for reaching.
chance. Judd Heath got a little upset with it, but Larry Bird right away, here comes a timeout coming up, has decided to go over on the other side of that zone. Here comes the play. Turnaround jump shot, not there. Dishes off inside. Gilbert goes up. He's a great leaper from inside. An interesting early timeout called by Michigan State's Judd Heathcote. We've played less than three minutes in Salt Lake City. Michigan State leads by one. Michigan State's Judd Heathcote called that time, and he's agonizing already. He made a terrific move as a coach. Only two minutes and 45 seconds have been used up in the game. There's something wrong inside that zone with Larry Bird cutting across it, and he adjusted it. If Larry Bird makes this free throw, he becomes the number five scorer in college history. He now joins a select group, Pete Maravich, Freeman Williams, Oscar Robertson, Elvin Hayes, and Larry Bird, number five. Al, I think they're going to bring Magic more outside because Miley handles him down there when he posts up. He might be better off playing a guard position. Good defense by Indiana State. Bird is on Kelser, knocks it away. Knicks against Conley, and he's going to slow it down. Oh, what a pass by Bird, but it hands up Gilbert. Gilbert didn't come to meet the pass that time. It was there. Watch on the weak side to help him out inside on the bucket. If Johnson posts up, Bird will help out. If Kelser po uh, posts up, Miley will help out. Kelser is handing off another easy two to Charles. They're overplaying Kelser, and he's fed two easy layups to Ron Charles. Well, Alex Gilbert tried to help out that time. When he helped out, no guard pulled back in. Gilbert, baseline. Urban Johnson brings it down court for Michigan State. Oh, deflected out of bounds. No, last touch by Charles. It goes to Indiana State. Here we see the play inside. Kelser makes his move. Now coming over to try to help out. What happened? Miley never shifted over. Ron Charles wide open. Indiana State with the ball, trailing by one. Four minutes gone. Bird. Oh, what a shooter. They're having a, they're having a trouble, a problem trying to adjust the bird going across the baseline of the zone and trying to nest in the middle here, which I said at the top of the show. Bird with four points. Indiana State leads by one. Kelser. Donnelly shoots rarely right down the bottom of the well. And Michigan State leads 9-8. Four and a half minutes gone. Greg Kelser has a great first step, and what he's doing is giving Larry Bird a lot, and they're trying to help her out a little bit. Therefore, other people are up the way from the ball. Carl Nix, 20-footer, way short. Donnelly gets the ball on Carroll. Remember, the most valuable player in this game, the letter Razor Company will send a $5,000 check in his honor to that institution. Greg Kelser shooting for 2,000 points in his career, more than any Spartan ever, has given Michigan State its biggest lead. That was the best offensive play of the game so far. Knicks has it stolen away. Three on one. Berkovich scores. Basket good. Foul is on. Great outlet pass by Magic Johnson. We talk again about his ability. Now, here we have the play right before. Kelser beat Bird on the baseline. Gilbert didn't slide over to protect. Here we have Magic Johnson throwing the ball out. Three on one, as you said, Dick. Berkovich takes it right to the hole. Reed not in position to stop him. Coming on down, they call a foul on Reed. When Reed moved his arm, that's a foul. If you get position, you must hold and not move any part of your body. Otherwise, it's a blocking foul. Bill Hodges trying to get an advantage over there. Tell his assistants, just relax and sit down. There was a blocking call. Is he calling that a two-shot foul? I can't believe he did because he certainly didn't cut his legs out. He was standing there to draw the charge. He a flagrant foul. I can't buy that one at all. Berkovich, the best free throw shooter for the Spartans, misses the front end. He's 84.7% on the year. This only is 9 of 59. That flagrant foul, Al, a man's got to deliberately try to cut your legs out from underneath you, and he was just standing there waiting. Michigan State, and this is what they've done throughout the tournament, take the early lead, and they have steamrolled a couple of clubs. 
closest anyone has come to Michigan State, Notre Dame, and they lost by 12. Ron Charles picking up Bird, coming across the lane, and then as soon as he goes past the lane, he's picked up by Kelso. Watch him coming across. Larry Bird took a shot, little short jumper, and he didn't have any place to go with it. He got hung in the air. He wanted to kill it to Alex, but couldn't get it in. Johnson to Kelser and a foul on Gilbert, Indiana State. His first. Billy, I think Kelser cleared out that time before he put the shot up with his inside arm. Well, he might have. But the thing that's so amazing about Magic Johnson is the pressure he puts on the defense, bringing that ball down the court. We return to our studios for this message with a score 14 to 8, Michigan State, and 8 14 minutes to play. As it was against Pennsylvania on Saturday, the Spartans from the Big Ten, the hot early shooting hand, the other team a bit cold. Well, Indiana uh, State is shooting from the perimeter, much more difficult shots, but Michigan State is uh, shooting from tight into the basket. You know, Dick, there's so much adrenaline flowing, but when you play against Michigan State early, you've got to be patient to look for some openings. You're not going to be able to get that shot up right away against the matchup zone they play. Greg Kelser looking for his fourth point. Michigan State now has doubled the score, 16-8. We played less than six minutes. And this out is where you say the zone gets tougher. Yes. They start backing that zone up, making it tougher and tougher to get it inside. Oh, he's double dribbled. Yes, he did. It. Got away with it. Bird dumps it off, and he was fouled by Donnelly. <laughs> Maybe the officials a little psyched up, dude. Carl Nix dribbled the ball twice. Larry made a little mistake then. When he felt the hand on him, he should have put the ball at the basket. It would have been an automatic two-shot foul instead of just a one-shot foul and taking the ball out the side. Ron Charles almost playing Bird man-to-man -man when he's in any area in the middle of that matchup zone. We're about to see our first substitute, Bob Heaton, is checking in at the scores table. He's been their dramatic star, winning four games at the buzzer this year. He's a good outside shooter. Indiana State gets stronger as they move in their subs. Their sixth and seventh man are equal or better than their fourth and fifth man. Here comes Bob Heaton. He's from a small Indiana town, 150 population, Corey, Indiana. And good shooter. Dick, now they have an unusual defensive matchup, though, because they have three guards in the game, which is, we're going to have to see which one of those three guards is going to take Magic Johnson for the simple reason that Molly would be, uh, would have to go back inside. Bob Heaton is not a guard. He can play guard and play forward. Bird inside. This oh, ball. Beautiful. College basketball's player of the year, Larry Bird, has six points. Looks like Heaton's going to take the center position defensively. It's Charles. Kelser, 20-footer. Rebound. Miley. And here comes Indiana State. The second horse trail by six. 13 minutes left, first half. Paul Nick's got to start perking. I'm sure Judd Heathcote likes where he is, but if he puts a big man in the game right now, he'd sure have domination on the board. They don't give Magic Johnson a ball until he gets into the offensive end of the court. Johnson, Ron oh. Kelser scores. Got a break. Kelser is bleeding from the nose or mouth. They apparently was struck in getting that last rebound. Carl Nix can't hit. Charles takes it away from his own teammate, and they call Trevor. What's happening right now, Bill Hodges is a very small team in the game, and you really have domination on the inside. You got Charles, a great leaper in the middle. Kelser, of course, a great leaper, and Magic Johnson all across the front line can get up there. Indiana State a little bit out, man. 18 to 10, Michigan State. Look at the jam up around Byrne when he goes inside. Steve Reed can't hit. Heat rebound, foul on Magic Johnson. He knew it. Yep. It was a good call. Right, came right across the lane. It's interesting, gentlemen, that if Indiana State wins, the Hoosier State will have two champions. The Hoosiers have already won the NIT. If Indiana State wins, if Michigan State wins, then the Big Ten Conference will throw out its chest because they will have had the NIT and NCAA champs. 
Boucher hysteria. Well, they really are boxing in Larry Bird right now. He's got two men on him. They're straight through, going over to his side completely with the defense. Bird and Johnson in the back of that zone defense. Magic against Bird. See, the two front men, Don Lee and Berkovich, they play the foul line extended. You take the foul line all the way to the side of the court. Here's the foul. Bird kicks oh. it in. Larry Bird using Great that up. left hand. Remember, he has a broken left thumb on that left hand. Well, all he has to do with that, they're not allowed anything but a foam sponge and tape around it. That's an NCAA rule. 18 to 12, Michigan State with the ball and the lead. Magic Johnson from 15, and he loves to hit that backboard. Certainly can't hit the outside shot, can he? <laughs> eight for proven. Johnson and eight for Bird so far. He's proven in this tournament particularly that he has nice range, a 15 to foot, 18 foot shot, can hit the ball. Good patience by Indiana State. They're not just firing it up on the outside, they're looking to get the ball in. There's Knicks inside. And the basket is allowed. A foul against Michigan State. There's Larry Bird, constantly in motion, trying to get position. You see Magic Johnson shielding one way. Here comes Charles over. Double teamed. He goes underneath the two, puts it up left hand. Now watch him bounce for the offensive rebound. He is a tough player and a constant move. He has complete control of his body. Foul was on Greg Kelser, Michigan State, his second. And Carl Nix looking for the three-point play. He just made his first points of the night. 20 to 15. The Spartans lead cut to five as we approach the halfway mark of this first 20-minute period. They're setting up a trap right now. Jay Vincent in the game. Now you really have the power team. Kelser sat down. There's Vincent. He can't connect it. Charles wraps it home. Bobo Charles has six. He got in inside Leroy Staley that time. An easy tap, and he's very quick off his feet. Well, Bill Hodges realizes he's awful small across the front line right now. He's got to that zone, Bill. Check that zone from this long angle. You see how those white shirts really do jam inside. Heat was fouled. One of the reasons there is Vincent can't react that fast. He's only about 80% recovered from the foot injury. And here you have the bigger lineup coming back. I tell you, Bill Hodges and Judd Heath go two guys really staying with this ball game. Ron Charles has his first foul. Bob Heaton at the line. The matchups are so important physically in there. And now he has Staley and he has Gilbert and he has Bird in the front line and they can go up on the board. 22 to 16, Heaton has his first point. Uh, Bob Heaton got his arm point, a corn pick machine with 11 years of age. He got a, uh, 60 stitches in his left arm. 22 to 17, Michigan State by five. The winner replaces the University of Kentucky as basketball champion. Away from the ball, foul is on Leroy Staley, 44, just into the game for Indiana State. He's from Tampa, Florida, went to Jefferson High School there. He's just trying to get, make sure that Magic Johnson doesn't get the ball down low. He's trying to fight him off defensively before he ever handles it. You see it right here. Now watch him. He doesn't want Magic to get that ball. Using his hands, trying to get advantage, and there was the foul. Inside to Johnson, over Staley. Not there. Rebound Bird and a foul on Vincent of Michigan State over the top. That's a close call underneath there, Billy. Well, excellent position again by Larry Bird. Boy, he, he has his feet moving all the time. Gets in position both to score and to rebound. Greg Kelser sitting down over there, Dick. You have him down for two fouls or one? Pardon me, I'm Billy. Kelser down for two. Two fouls. That's probably why he said. I believe in the first half you save a man for two fouls. The second half you save him after three. When he gets four fouls, let him go. He's no good to you. He's coming back in. The second bar is trying to cut into that five point lead. Nine minutes, 40 seconds left. First half. Great halftime feature. Magic Johnson, Larry Bird to music in slow motion. Don't go away at halftime. There's Larry Bird's mother, Southern Indiana, cheering her now famous son. 
She was funny the other night after the game. She said, too many turnovers. <laughs> 34 points, but she was looking at that turnover list. Her son committed 11 mistakes. Bob Heat. Rebound Donnelly. The secondary players are not hitting that perimeter shot. Oh, my. Oh, great play by Paul. Oh, and he saves it. That was an alley-oop pass almost, trying to get it into Kelsey. Standing ovation from some of the fans, and they're not in the Indiana State section. Bird hanging, can't score. Johnson to Berkovich. Three on two. Vincent fouled by Heat number 30. Bob Heaton gets the foul. He stopped the easy layup. Larry Bird, a little upset with himself, missing that shot. Here you go, Magic Johnson throwing it up, and look at Bird hustling down the floor. Now, he was under the basket when that play started to develop, went the full 90 feet for the interception. The bird that flies the highest sees the forest. <laughs> Al McGuire, <laughs> March 1979. <laughs> Is that farthest or forest? Forest. I, I still don't know. Jay Benson, he's from Lansing, Michigan. Same class as Irvin Johnson. They were high school competitors near the Michigan State campus. That's Benson's first point. He's playing on a very sore right foot. Nine minutes left in the first half. They need this basket right here. Larry Bird's getting buried in that zone a little bit. Oh, oh next hammer's down, a two-pointer, 23-19. That's very important. Carl Nick's got to start penetrating into the zone to either kick off or shoot the ball. Larry Bird with the arm, says the official, as Kelser left him in his tracks. Kelser is lightning quick with that first step. Well, Larry Bird trying to figure him out a little bit defensively. He's, back, he's going to back off him now because he's beating him with a first step. He can't play a man-to-man -man out in the side when they isolate him. He pushed with his left arm inside that time. And what's asking him, you know, physically to go and play Kelso and one into the floor and then be constantly moving in the offensive end is tough. Team fouls, both have six. Johnson can't connect, gets his own rebound, and can't score. Foul underneath. Apparently on Gilbert, and now, although this is a shooting foul, both teams from now on will go to the one-to-one. -one. Gilbert, a great leaper, junior college. He high jumps seven feet. He hopes after basketball or with basketball, he might make it to Moscow as a high jumper. He has a 40-inch vertical jump. Magic Johnson, incredibly fine free throw shooter, and there's a member of the Johnson family. I believe that's his grandfather, Jesse Johnson. A miss, and out of bounds to Michigan State. Larry Bird can't believe he was not fouled. He looked like he broke his wing that time when he's laying on the floor. It was seeing right here. He's going up. A lot of bodies battling. No question about the foul. He got knocked to the floor. Here it is again. A bird and a foul. Definitely got fouled right here. Watch him get knocked to the floor, and they say it's Michigan State out of bounds. Tough call for the <laughs> State. There he goes. He lets his head go back at the end in frustration. He caught a pretty good elbow in the back of the head. Oh, he's tough, kid. There's that man-to-man -man out of bounds again, Al. Bird oh. with a block. Heaton can't save it. What a hustle effort by Heaton. He was out of bounds anyway. But Bird showing defensively his great timing as well. It's a real competitor as all the great players of all-time in college basketball are beautiful block. Inside Vincent. Oh, oh. Goaltending, and it would not have gone in. That's goaltending, but a mistake made by Staley. The ball was not on line. Here comes Miley in the ball game to take him on out of there. Staley at times coming in off the bench. We'll see it here, and you were right, Dick. It never would have gone into the basket. But I think what Bill Hodges does well in the substitutions, he gives a try, Al, as you pointed out. His sixth and seventh men may be better than his fourth and fifth, but he gives them a try, gets them back in there later. He never takes the ball player out of a game for a mistake. He takes him out for a defensive or offensive adjustment. Larry Bird, way on the top, but Kelser can't handle the rebound. Kelser not only the all-time great scorer in Michigan State history, but their top rebounder again this year. Bird hasn't yet found out where he really wants to get the ball against this matchup zone. Michigan State, 26, Indiana State, 19, 8 minutes left, first half. And your space eater's in the middle, Al. Jay Vincent, number 31, takes 
of a lot of room inside that zone. That's a tough matchup. Kelser very nearly stole it, and he did deflect it off the hands of Larry Bird. They don't get the ball to Magic Johnson until they get into the offensive zone. Kelser, 18-footer, not there. Rebound Gilbert and a foul on Johnson, his second. Magic Johnson, the agony of the whistle. Yeah, it's hard to believe there. That was a little touch foul on Magic, and before we had a guy blasted to the floor. Bill Hodges, young Indiana State coach. Some of you watching Indiana State, Michigan State for the first time. Bill Hodges took over as head coach this year when Bob King, a veteran coach at Indiana State, suffered a heart attack and then surgery for brain aneurysm. Bob King is here, recuperating. He's still the athletic director and cheering young Bill Hodges, first year head coach, perfect 33-0. Way off the line, Gilbert notoriously bad free throw shooter, but Burr gets it. Can't score, out of bounds. Well, I believe Indiana State got a break on that one. It appeared to touch Gilbert last. Alex Gilbert shoots 27% from the foul line. When he makes one down in Terre Haute, the whole student body stands up and applauds him. You were trying to challenge him to a little one-on-one -on -one yesterday. He, he almost breaks the glass when he shoots a foul shot. 26 to 19. Boy, that defense clogs things up so beautifully. Bird, way short. That was partially blocked by Berkovich. Nix, beautiful pass to Gilbert and a foul on Berkovich. You saw Johnson leap in the air. Magic thought they were going to call it on him. Nix is starting to create problems inside the zone. Now they have to have this. Nix got to have a good game to neutralize uh, the zone inside. He has to Ever penetrate. Seen? That's a pretty good block coming over the top by Berkovich. Had his hand right on the ball. Gilbert again, 27% free throw shooter, incredible. He is now, this year, 20 out of 77. You know what's amazing about him, too, is the fact that he has decent form. It, it's got to be concentration on his part. Well, he's over three. Luke Chamberlain had the same problem. I believe he should play the shot off the backboard, and if it misses, at least the rebound will go further out into the area where you have your own men. Inside is Vincent to score, and Michigan State now has jumped into a nine-point lead. Seven minutes left, first half. Sycamores really need a bucket this trip down court. Bird with a good save. One hand. Wow. The basket is not allowed. They're calling the foul on Larry Bird. He pushed in. Larry Bird's getting a little frustrated now because he can't find an opening in which he can get his offensive move started. You watch, he drops his shoulder in a moment, gets right. the ball over here, gives a head fake. Watch this, he gives a head fake. Now he drops his shoulder in. Really hit him. And he didn't barely touch Kelsey. Pretty good acting job by Kelsey. The foul on the right hand. The state uh, scores here. Indiana has to call a timeout. And Magic Johnson hanging and hitting a 12-footer. 30 to 19, the Spartans lead. 6:28 remaining in the first half. No timeout call by the Sycamores. Anytime Larry Bird touches it, there's about three people in his area. Bird left alone. He's automatic. Doesn't tighten up. No. Puts the shot up the same way every time. He missed about four shots in a row. The fifth one, exactly the same form. Ten points for Magic Johnson. Ten points for Larry Bird. Vincent's doing a good job out there. Well, Judd Heathcote said he'll play as long as hard as he has to. Johnson inside, follows his own shot. And Bird saves it. 30-21, Michigan State. Five and a half minutes remaining. First half. Steve Reed has to start shooting from the top of that key. Nix will fire and hit. Carl Nix has hit two in a row, has seven points. Now Magic Johnson's moving to the backcourt. Going to start his own offense. Wiley on it. Here's a forward playing against the guard because Johnson at 6'8 creates unusual problems. Defensively, out of bounds to Michigan State. 
when Magic Johnson brings the ball up, he's going to pass off to one of the guards, then post up. I'm out. Five minutes, 14 seconds left in the first half. The Spartans lead the Sycamores by seven. Well, this game tonight will conclude our exciting year of college basketball. It's the Golden Gloves Association of American Tournament of Champions from Indianapolis. We'll be pleased to be chatting about the top amateur boxers in the nation with you on Sports World. That's Sunday at 4 o'clock Eastern Time. Let's check statistically on the Johnson Bird matchup. Each with 10 points. Each with one assist, and Bird has two more rebounds. Little over five minutes left to go for the half. Kelser off to Johnson, wide open. Kelser has become the assist man in this first half. We really have four front court men in the game right now for Michigan State, and Berkovich is a good leaper at about 6 4. They've changed their zone defense completely. Next way off the mark, rebound Charles. Johnson, three on one. Here it comes. The alley of the Greg Kelser. Nick, this is going to be a very critical time for Indiana State because this is a massive lineup that Michigan State has in the game right now. All the big feet in that zone. Somebody has to be open when they collapse the zone. Two men on a wing. Bird deep in the corner. Push off. Urban Johnson pushing for Michigan State. And Magic Johnson has his third foul. Here we're going to see the play. Of course, Kelsey's already moved, getting himself in position. Look at the timing here between those two great individuals. Magic Johnson this year. I don't believe he's fouled out. Maybe once. No, five times he's fouled out. I remember. During the year. They don't have that on their statistical sheet, but three fouls to sit down. The Magic Man has to hurt Michigan State. If nothing else, just emotionally, he gives that team such a spirit. Well, the thing I think it really hurts is I believe Judd Heathcote really loved the team he had on the floor at this given time with his four big men in the game. The zone was really going to be tough to get anything inside on. Miley has not scored in the game. Kelsey rebound. Michigan State. With an 11-point lead, that's the largest of the game. Foul shooting is hurting Indiana State. That was the front of a 1-1 that time. Inside to Kelser. A little short. Heaton gets the rebound on a tip-out. Need a basket bed. I'm surprised Larry Bird's finding himself over in Kelser's side all the time. Kelsey's such a great leap over there. Of course, Charles is too, so he's out of the frying pan into the fire no matter where you go, I guess. Charles has taken that back line spot that Urban Johnson usually works. See, Jay Vincent being able to play really helps Michigan State. Nice play by Charles. Intercepts the pass intended for Bird. Indiana State stays in a hard man-to-man. -man. Oh, they open up. Kelsey will go around him. Oh, good help by Carl Nix. Real good help. Now, Miley fell down, and Nix came in to pick up Kelsey, who had design on driving. Less than three minutes left in the first half. Berkovich on the line. Traveling. 1979 NCAA Basketball Championship Program is a Momento Yield Treasure. Exclusive information on the Final Four, tournament records, plus plenty of photos, features, much more contained in this collector's issue. Send a check or money order for $4 to NCAA Program. It's 1979, Lexington, Kentucky, 40594. Preceding message was furnished by the NCAA. Al, nobody's tried to screen any of those front guys. They've got to get some guard play out here, taking some shots in the perimeter. There's one. Heaton can't hit. Rebound to Vincent. You saw that zone again, collapsing in. Yeah, they're losing their poise a little bit, Indiana State. Oh, you knew it was coming. Oh, he missed it. But there was a foul on Kelly. 
Gilbert of Indiana State. Kelser going for the ram and they hit the iron. Watch you, how high they get up. Excuse me, Billy, go ahead. You knew it was coming. Brad Miley had been kind of lulled to sleep a little bit by Kelser. There he goes up. Two great leapers going against each other. Oh, that, that, that's unbelievable, the height that, that, that Gilbert gets up. Pause briefly for station identification. This is the NBC Television Network. You've got two shots, man. Dick Enberg with Al McGuire and Billy Packer. Salt Lake City, the final game of this 1979 season. Michigan State, after Indiana State scored the first goal of the game, has taken command and now leads by 11 points, although their star, Magic Johnson, is on the bench with three fouls. Now Staley returns for Indiana State as Gilbert with three takes a rest. Kelser looking for his seventh point. Biggest lead for Michigan State, 35-23. And now Johnson, the cheerleader. Special K is a great ball for Bob Heaton, he hits a clutch goal. It's 35-25, four for Heaton. That's what it'll take to open some things up for Burns. The perimeter shots by the guard. Nick's a near interception. Indiana State has been in more close games, at least of late. They've won two games in this tournament by two points, their last two against Arkansas and DePaul. Michigan State has had a relatively easy time. Some thought if it was a close game, it would be to the advantage of Indiana State. I believe that because Indiana State has been true, and Michigan State has been, been blowing teams out, and the tennis needs to tighten up in a close game. Berkovich had an easy 15-footer and overpass. Indiana State gets a break. Bird on top of this game again defensively. Give it to Heaton in the corner. He's free. Give it to him. There he is. Shoot it up. Two for two for Bob Heaton. How do you know those things? That's what I got paid for for 19 years of coaching. It's automatic. A minute and a half <laughs> left in this first 20 minutes. Michigan State by eight. Heaton has six points. Going to be Gonzalez coming in the game to play that back line. Good patience by Kelser. He doesn't try to force the shot. Both outstanding coaches. Minute and eight looks like they're trying to set up a while. The yeah, big difference, whether it's a ten-point or a six-point halftime differential. Yeah, when you go in with double digits down, psychologically it affects you. Michigan State, if they can do it, I don't think they can hold it for 54 seconds. But the cookie jar, 44, Staley, it's his second foul. Staley's the only married speller on uh, Indiana State. Wife's name is Crystal. Magic Johnson on the sidelines, doing a little coaching. Mike Perkovich trying to help him. Never seen a man more involved once he takes the court, whether he's playing, watching. He does everything but sell programs. And here's a guy that does that. Kelser is truly an All-American basketball player. And an academic All-American, a B student in criminal justice on the Michigan State campus. He now has nine points in Michigan State, back on top by 10. There's Coach Wooden. He coached at Indiana State for two years before he went on to UCLA. That's right, in the late 40s. Heaton can't hit. Bird saves it. Open is next. Oh, and a play by Greg Kelser. He took it right out of his hand. Special K. <laughs> that was an incredible play. Down to the final seconds of this first half. A ten-point lead. There goes Kelser. Lost the ball to Bird. And a foul oh. on Kelser. That's a smart Ooh. play by Larry Bird. That's his third. Boy, this is a dangerous call there because of the third foul on Greg Kelson. Well, that doesn't make it dangerous, Al. That makes it the third. Well, but I'm saying they could have had him out of the game and they could have pulled up and played for one shot. Well, Larry Bird did a smart thing. Here's Nick's getting knocked out of bounds a little bit. Well, watch a great catch by Kelser. Comes down and rips it on off of there. And here we'll see the play. He was going to try to behind the back this to Vincent. Lost the handle. Bird touched it a little bit. Picks it up. Now, Bird being smart realizes Kelser's coming. Just goes underneath him and lets him draw the foul. Well, that's really a thin call, isn't it? Well, a man knocks him down. I think yeah, but he was falling. Call. I mean, again, it points out the acting. You have to be 
a dra dramatist <laughs> in order to play this game anymore. Beautiful, Dick, beautiful. Well, Mix got hit on the other end of the court a moment before. I you like the I don't, say, I don't know how to say dramatist, but I think that's what you're trying to say, <laughs> Professor. <laughs> 37, 28, final second. Dave Benson and Charles has it knocked away to Indiana State at the buzzer, the end of the first half. 20 minutes to go at the intermission, the score. Michigan State, 37, Indiana State, 28, and neither Bill Hodges of Indiana State nor Judd Heathcote of the Spartans very happy about the men in the black and white shirts. A great halftime show coming up. Stay with us. Michigan State outscoring, out shooting from the floor and the free throw line, leading by nine points as we open the second half. Same five players will start for each club. That means that Irvin Johnson, Greg Kelser with three fouls, and Alex Gilbert of Indiana State also playing with three. Kelser, Gilbert, jump it off. They're both going to go upstairs on this. Kelser got it in the first half. Gilbert got it in that half, but he went back to Johnson. We introduce the players for you, Don Lee and Berkovich in the backcourt presently with Charles Johnson posting up and Kelser from Michigan State. Nixon and Reed, the guards for Indiana State, Bird, Wiley, Gilbert, the front line, Kelser, he hits it, danced at home. Boy, he felt the defensive pressure coming from the weak side that time and pulled up for the jumper. Michigan State's biggest lead was 12 points in the first half. Indiana State led last at 8-7 early in the game. Steve Reed got a shoot. Put it up. Wide open. Can't hit it. Rebound Charles. Magic Johnson. Now they're just ignoring Reed. And of course, Miley in the particular any kind of offensive structure they have, and that's her. Terry Donnelly, that's how the game began with a little left hander hitting a jumper from the side. He has four points, one early in the game, one early in this half. We can watch him coming down. All the pressure is completely on Larry Bird right now. Look at the pressure around him. Two, three left. And he's short. The second half does not start well for the Sycamore. Johnson going outside, directing that offense. He's switching with Donnelly a little bit. Almost turned it over. Back door to Charles. And he is fouled. Gilbert has his fourth. That's one of the problems in playing man-to-man, -man, overplaying. You're vulnerable to the back door pass. If you notice in this, he goes high, then goes back door on Gilbert. And obviously, it should have been a simple dunk. He caught him for his fourth foul. It'll be Two shots from the line. No move by Bill Hodges to replace Gilbert. Well, he's down now. He's going to have to play for all the marbles. Ron Charles from the Virgin Islands. He was a member of the Virgin Island Pan American team at the age of 16. He started the first 19 games this year. The Berkovich knocked him out of the starting spot. Charles has his seventh point, and Michigan State enjoys its widest margin of this game, 14 points. Charles, everybody follows Larry Bird wherever he goes. They just won't let him touch that ball, which means Reed's got to be open. Bird, short again. The tough shot. rebounds. Bird. Bill Hodges going for a timeout. The game getting away from his team. Michigan State has the ball, has a 14-point lead, and the green and white flat man from East Lansing, Michigan, smell a championship. They've come from everywhere, Hawaii, Alaska, the entire 50 states, 15,410 to see the 1979 National Championship game and Larry Bird has had a cold shooting night, but obviously a great defense from the Spartan walking him throughout. Plenty of time left. There's over 17 minutes left. Johnson 
pass deflected out to Berkovich. Both teams are playing good defense. Nobody getting anything easy out here. Indiana's trying to trap. Kelser and Byrd are matched up on the Indiana State defense. There they are. And Kelser from behind the backboard nails one. That was a great shot. Fading away, spinning the opposite direction. 16-point lead, 17-15 left. Kelser has 13 to lead all scores. See Magic Johnson and Ron Charles have him sandwiched in. Basket is good. The foul is on Terry Donnelly. Donnelly of Michigan State, his second foul. Here he, here he is, Dick. Look at they having sandwiched in completely. You just can't get him the ball. When he gets it, he's trying to force a little bit. I think he should stay underneath like that and look for inside position. Let the other ball to shoot because every time he gets a rebound, it'd be two points or possibly a three-point play. Knicks unable to get the three-point play, but he looking for a four-pointer. No foul. Indiana State fans unhappy. They wanted a whistle. Magic double team. There's the trap you were talking about, Al, but men are going to be open like Terry Donnelly. Here's the little guard, rarely shoots, averages five, six points a game, but when he's open, he's deadly. He's the quarterback. He's steady. He does his job. Anything to win the game. That zone is backed in inside the foul line area now, so Bird's really going to have a problem. Take some step jumpers. He has to take the shot. Bob Heaton connects. And it's 46-32. 16 minutes left. That's basically the same play we saw before. Man going up for the jumper. If he doesn't leave the floor, he's all right. Donnelly. Terry Donnelly hits again. The junior from St. Louis, Missouri, averaging six points a game, has eight tonight on four 15-footers. Carl Nix, not there, rebound Berkovich. Berkovich hit in the face, but he's okay. Berkovich a good leaper, about six foot four, so that gives them a, a, a big guard in there, along with a good size. Carl is on Kelser, number four, as Bird had position, and Kelser called for charging. They wanted to take Larry one-on-one -on -one that time, Billy. Here it is, Billy. Here we see it now. It's going to be a big factor right here, the foul situation. Didn't quite see the completion of the charge, but Kelser unable to get around Bird, who was taking... Here it is. Here, it is. here we see him trying to go. Larry Bird moves in excellent position, shoulder to shoulder, draws the charge. So Kelser leading the game and scoring with 13 is out with four fouls. Number 31, Jay Vincent, has replaced him for Michigan State. The Spartans out shooting the Sycamores by plenty. I don't want to hurt the Magic fans, but I think Greg Kelsey is the most important man on the spot. Carl Nix is open and hits. He has an unorthodox shooting shot, and it turns his wrist. But that shot's available. You know, with a 16-point spread, I feel the momentum turning now for Indiana State. Let's see what happens. Great passing by Michigan State, and Conley is four for four. That's what makes the Magic so great. Instead of trying to penetrate in here when it's not available, hit the ball around to the free man. Heaton from 18, and he connects, and suddenly the pace quickens. They've got to pick up all over the court, put more pressure on. Campbell on the double team, there it is. Up, he went back and over. That's it. Traveling against Berkovich, who put on the brakes, but went from the front court to the back court. Watch Judd to call a timeout. He's losing the momentum of the game. A he... lot of good pressure up here. Magic Johnson throws a very tough pass for Berkovich to have to handle right there, and a good job by Larry Bird defense. And again, Bird, not known for his defense, makes big plays at that end, too. Bird can't connect. 
contact, and he grimaces as that ball refused to fall for him. That's the second time he was in good position down in low, has a man on his back. They're sliding the man to the deep corner. That leaves Bird open under there against Jay Vincent. Puts it right up, and he wanted this one. Or such a soft touch, even at that, it just danced on the rim. My ball, stay here, stay here. Boy, that's not the Larry Bird that has shot Indiana State through a 33 and 0 year. The fouls have been hurting them, but I still feel they're on the come. 50. 37, Michigan State with 14 minutes plus remaining. This full court pressure really did a good job against Arkansas. Berkovich is open. Rebound, Staley, 44 to Sycamore. Indiana State trying to cut into that big Michigan State advantage. Next time down, now you can, I think you can look for Judd Heathcote to try to get his team calmed down with a timeout. I thought he would have done it the last time. Go, 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 go. Two men on Bird, Johnson and Vincent. Knicks off to Staley. Oh. It is good, and the foul is on Charles. Oh, my. Judd, Judd's going on over there. Crazy. Judd has to watch out for a technical foul. Here's the dish in here. Good penetration by Knicks. Now watch it right here. Staley just bangs into him, knocks him down. The basket counts. Got to question the call. Would you have been on your feet, Al? Um, I'd be on top of the bench. <laughs> <laughs> I lack vocabulary in those situations. But that's part of momentum, getting the calls, and now they get a jump ball. So things are turning a bit, and as you've said, in the course of 40 minutes, everyone's going to have their turn. The momentum will flow, and now it appears to be Bill Hodges getting the breaks. And you know when you're 33-0, and 0, you guys are never going to quit. They've been behind before. There's the time. They had a call. Judd Heathcote angry at the officials and worried now about this game with Kelser on the sidelines. We'll be back. 11 point Michigan State advantage. Indiana State trailing Michigan State by 11. 50 to 39. 13 minutes, 44 seconds. It has not been a good night for Bird. Well, his poorest nights of the year. Well, it probably is, but you've got to credit Michigan State defense for that. They've forced him out of the shooting territory. He's been trying to generate offense all by himself. Therefore, he's not taking his normal shot. The biggest problem is they're shooting 7 for 15 in the foul line, which is 43%. And a lot of those fouls got to the front end of a 1-1 one one in the first half. Staley had that tip, but tipped it right into the hands of Michigan State. You notice who's getting the ball now. Magic Johnson bringing it up to clear it out for him. Johnson against Staley, double teamed as Nick Campbell. Look at him hustle back and get his man. Oh, Nick's a great athlete. He's dazzling the win. Michigan State going to play with a little bit. Not going for the basket. Oh. That oh. pass went to Judd Heathcote. He said, hey, I don't want the ball. Greg Kelso means so much to Michigan State that it's frightening. <laughs> Kelso on the sidelines with four fouls. 13 minutes left. <laughs> Bob Heath is short. And Heath gets it back. He's at the bird. Bird. Oh! Here comes your bow. Michigan State definitely rattled now. And they're looking for another offensive weapon, you know what? Kelser on the bench, they don't have another score already. Rebound, Larry Burr. Michigan State 16 point lead has been whittled to nine. Magic might have got away with the charge that time. But Michigan State, the great ball club, they're rallying back too. But I think Indiana State still has the momentum. thought he had two points. He was hustling down on defense. What's really helping him right now is they're getting some penetration. Reed on the inside. We'll see the foul right here. Bird's got that position. Grabbed him by the arm. Never really did have the ball. Good call on the inside. Bird's going to the line. Why is Charles did the hold. It's not a shooting foul. And it'll be Indiana State playing it from the side. Out 
Marco Staley, returning number 40, Brad Miley, the junior from Rushville, Indiana. He's their top defensive forward. You can feel the confidence level really picking up for Indiana State, too, particularly from the outside. Reed and Heaton are trying to get that ball up. There's five personal fouls on Michigan State, one on Indiana State. Well, Indiana State's playing the man-to-man -man pressure. Larry Bird clears it out. Knicks. Oh, what a play, and he is fouled by Vincent of Michigan State. And the foul total continues to climb for Michigan State. That's their sixth of this half. You're really getting penetration now by the Indiana State guards. One time Knicks, the next time Reed, the next time Heat. There's his balance. Great athletic move on the inside, there's the foul. That's what they weren't doing in the first half. Okay, it's again, seven for 16 from the line, and a lot of those, the front end of one and one. I'm going to give you a question here, fellas, that Judd Heathcote's got to be thinking about. Greg Kelser, he can't let it get down too much more without bringing him back in. Two more critical misses on the free throw line by Indiana State. At the 11 and a half minute mark, Indiana State is in the one and one. Foul on Bird. No, Nix gets the foul as they double team. They're really trapping, but what you don't have in the front line is anybody that really likes to go one on one with the ball. So if they get it in there, it's just coming right back out. They really do miss Kelser at this stage. He can play one on one with anyone. Johnson maneuvering. It's a little easy five footer. Big basket. Super play. He isn't going to be able to play both the guard and the forward spot. Both Johnson and Bird, each with 14, to lead their respective teams. 11 minutes, 15 seconds left. Michigan State with an 11 point lead. Heaton and a foul on Vincent as he rammed into Bird. What a great move without the ball by Larry Bird going for the offensive rebound. We've seen him game after game now. We're going to see him. Watch him roll right now on Jay Vincent. As soon as he feels it going, there goes the roll. He gets fouled across the head, but it gets him his position. Now he's going up for it, and there's the foul. And Vincent now has four fouls. That forces Judd Heathcote to go to the bench. And number 35, Robert Gonzalez, a freshman, will come in for Vincent. All right, there's 11 points spread. There's over 11 minutes left. There's a lifetime. We got ourselves a good game here. Look at those shooting percentages. 37% for the foul. Now they're in the one and one. It's really going to be important. Bird makes it a 10 point ball game. Bird shoots 84% from the line on the year. It looks like Larry's satisfied to stay in the low post now, too, and start to go for offensive rebounds. Bird makes one out of two. by Nix. Super play. Nix. Ten point lead for Michigan State. Larry Bird just staying down low looking for offensive rebound. Nix. He made the play here in the bucket. Last year Indiana State lost nine games. This year they got Paul Nix and haven't lost any. that the Sycamores are not afraid to challenge Urban Johnson. And that's a turnover by Magic Johnson. I don't think it was a walk. It was an unusual looking play, but I don't believe it was a walk. Here's it was that defensive play by Nix. Look at that steal. Uh, he's a just a top-notch athlete. Looked like a shortstop. A basket here would pull Indiana State to within six. And here comes Kelser off the bench. It's something Judd Heathcote just has to do. Bird. 52 to 46, and Indiana State has cut 10 points off that 16 point Spartan advantage. Judd Heathcote may have to call another timeout to get Kelser in the game. If there's no stop in the action here, he just has to have another offensive threat. Miley's doing a good job on Magic. Magic's trying to post him up. Markovic. Well, Magic's trying to do it all. Well, he, he can't be the man to make the play and also be the scorer. I think he can do it all. <laughs> Here he goes. He misses. Look at Bird. He wanted that rebound. And Indiana State fans come to their feet. As Indiana 
State lost their composure in the first half. Michigan State has now lost their composure. They Nine need this team, and they need Kelser in there. Nine and a half minutes left. Reed's got it. Not there. Heaton can't save it, and Donlin comes up with a rebound. Deep throat, motioning to Johnson what he wants him to do offensively. He wants a clear out for him down in low. But they're floating off the weak side, blacking up, uh, blocking up the red marks on the court there. Well, you notice they got three men on one side to try to get Magic free for a one-on-one -on -one move. I feel they want to get the ball right where it is now to Charles. Michigan State leading by six, 8.45 left. Offense. Nope, it's on Miley, 40 of Indiana State. You thought it should have gone the other way? He banged in there pretty good with his shoulder. Now is going to be an important time in the game. Kelser's back in the game. If he can stay in it, we're going to see the play here. Watch him put his shoulder down when he turns the corner. Riley concentrating, looking for the pass. Here he comes. There's the shoulder pumped right in right there. Miley's good on defense. He has quick feet. He reacts quickly, and he anticipates. In contrast to Indiana State, Michigan State taking advantage of its charity opportunities. Oh, missed by Johnson. North 53, 46, with 840 left. Championship of the NCAA, the best college team in the country. Bob Heaton, right there, and Donnelly in the right spot again for Michigan State. He's played a solid game, 10 points, he has about five rebounds. Now we're going to see a little different situation on offense with Kelter in the game. Bird is going to be guarding. They're spreading out. They want to catch Greg Kelter with the ball, try to get a foul on Bird. Urban Johnson scores, and it's now 55-46, Michigan State. That was the same move that was the call to walk before. Johnson's got that long stride, pulls up, and takes it off the wrong foot. All right, let me see the long stride he has right here, Billy. All right, watch it. Boom, boom, boom. No, no, never used his bullet. He took a walk on the ball, boy. <laughs> Larry Bird, not there. Oh, what a tip by Leroy Staley, his first pass of the game. Press is really doing the job, too. Michigan State goes primarily with five, six guys. There's Kelser, and he can't hit it. Knicks rebounding for the Sycamores, who trail by seven with seven and a half minutes left. Indiana State is still sitting back in their 2-3 zone, doing a good job. In oh, good thing. Knicks inside, can't hit. Third rebounds, and can't score. Oh, there's a big play. He's a little bit off balance, and a foul on Knicks. So Indiana State had two golden opportunities, Knicks and Bird, but they could not connect. You think he's not tired? Boy, they're grasping for everything they have right now. Here's Larry Bird. He got off balance a little bit. Great rebound, though, just keeping the ball active. He was falling backwards. Had a hard time putting that up. There's Magic with a rebound. Here comes the foul. Putting his shoulder block. Magic is playing his heart out. When you he see is. a ball player put his hands on his hips, that means he's tired. When he doesn't have the ball, he can rest him on his hips. Bird intercepts. And oh, good idea. Him. Nope, he was on the sideline. And he would have made a great flying pass to a teammate. I think he has an extra eye someplace. Bill Hodges going to the press is what brought him back. Changed the momentum of the game. Of course, Kelsey was out of there for a long period of time. Magic Johnson, he has 17 points. Larry Bird has 17. Oh, Charles with a good save. Well, that was good. Good save is right, Dick. Real tough catch. Elwood Bird, he has to be careful about driving, too, because of the four fouls, he picked up the offensive guard. They're going to isolate Kelser, he'll take Bird. There he goes. And oh. he gets it. He yelled short. Kelser didn't think that was going in, but he got a kind hit. He, he lost his shoe. Now we got another shoe coming for Michigan State. Trying to get it back on, but it's not on yet. Timeout. Spartans. Oh. Bill, no, Bill Hodges called the timeout. Allows Kelsey to get his shoe back on, but I know it wasn't for that reason. 
The score, Michigan State, 68-57. Indiana State, 48. We return to our studios for this message. The 1979 NCAA Basketball Championship Program, a memo, memento you'll treasure, exclusive information on the Final Four, tournament records plus plenty of photos, features, much more contained in this collector's issue. Send a check and money order, $4 to NCAA Program, Box 1979, Lexington, Kentucky, 40594. Preceding message furnished by the NCAA. Our statistician, Craig Hisla, has Indiana State 8 for 19 from the free throw line. Michigan State 10 of 16, and that could well be the difference between a Michigan State nine-point lead and a very close game. And, Dick, I don't know how many of those would be front ends of one and one, so that really hurt them. Must have a couple anyway. If Indiana State doesn't score this time, the next time down, I believe that Michigan State will spread it out a little bit, try to isolate Kelcher on the side with Larry Bird. That'll be a good move in a couple of ways now because Kelcher with those foul situations would help move that clock down a little for him. Ron Charles is the man hawking Bird most of the time in that zone. Now Irvin Johnson has him. Good pass. Carl Nix, son of a Baptist minister from Chicago, rattles in. Another bucket, he has 15. Less than six minutes left. They're still running their offense. He has to having a hard time keeping that ball away from Magic. He comes out and beats it so well. He easily evades the steal try by Staley. Kyle Nix will double team the first chance he gets. Berkovitz a good reverse on the dribble into Kelser. Knocked away by Bird and saved by Ron Charles. Second great pair of hands on Charles in the last 30 seconds. Saved two balls from going out of bounds. Seven points, Spartan lead. Trying to run out that clock now. And here goes Johnson. Good backdoor move, and it split out fairly well. And everybody expected Johnson to come to the ball, goes backdoor. Here he is, Heaton waiting on him. When we get back to that call, a man up in the air has to have room to come down. Irvin Johnson looking for the three-point play, and the bench for the Indiana State Sycamore is showing more emotion now than we've seen any time in the tournament. The reason for it, Dick, they're calling it another two-shot foul, saying the man was cut. Now, that's, that's a referee's interpretation. I don't think that he maliciously cut him out from underneath, but the rule states that an airborne man, you cannot step in underneath it. That's the second time they call it today, Bill. They call it at the top of the program, they call right. it now. It's a very difficult call, unless you've been calling it all year. To start calling this a championship game, I don't think it's right. I got to it all year, isn't it? We played it twice tonight? Well, we had one in the game in the semifinals, a definite cut. And that was not called. 21 points from Magic Johnson, a four-point play. And Michigan State has an 11-point lead. Bird hits the short leg. Boy, a lot of heart out here in the part of both of these ball clubs right now. Clock becomes a factor. 19 points for Bird. And a foul on Nix of Indiana State. And again, Bill Hodges off the bench. I hope we can catch this one on the replay. Here we go, Bergovich coming down. Nick's great athletic ability. I don't know why, Al. Why is gotcha. that a foul on Nick's? I um, I gotta let that one go by. It has not been a well officiated game. I think we can make that comment. They've had some problems, and uh, it's the pressure. Now they're doing the best they can, but we've seen some unusual calls both sides. It looked like the man fell down that time, and the ref might have been at the wrong angle. But they've been going both ways with the calls. When they're incompetent, they'll be consistently incompetent, which isn't too bad. <laughs> That's a little strong. Huh? Here's the spread out a little bit. In the Catbird seat, four and a half minutes to go, and the Spartans have a big 11-point lead. They get nine, nine points. And they got a spread offense going right now. This is not their normal offense. Timeout, Michigan State. Plenty of time, four minutes and 25 seconds left with Michigan State 
leading Indiana State 61-52. We would be remiss if we didn't take time to salute the men who really make these telecasts work, and we're blessed at NBC in, in this tournament. I think fans should understand we've had over 400 engineers and production people to give you the pictures, the sound, uh, the special features. We have 85 technicians working this championship series from Salt Lake City. Uh, we're happy as they are that NBC will be bringing you the championship games with a new contract with the NCAA. Two more years will be in Indianapolis Market Square Arena again next year. Our thanks to Walter Byers, Tom Jerstad, Wayne Duke of the NCAA, Dave Kaywood. And uh, while we're passing out our bouquets, our thanks to our host from the University of Utah, Athletic Director Arnie Farron, Tournament Manager Ned Olger, and the two Sports Information Directors, Ed McKee of Indiana State, Fred Stabley of Michigan State. Thank you, everyone, for a tremendous tournament and all your support. Did you miss anybody, Dick? <laughs> I want to thank you guys. You made it fun. You're our leader. I'm going to miss, you know, the, you know, for everyone. You know, the back college basketball season is winding down. And I'm going to miss uh, our weekly gatherings. It's been a marvelous year. College basketball never been better, right? It's at the top of its game. It's top shelf, Park Avenue, all the way. And I can't wait to see some of the great high school talent we've got in the country now coming into the ranks next year. Now down to the final four and a half minutes. Definitely a spread offense now. Magic tough to handle in this. He meets the ball so well. They keep Kelser and Charles Lowe and let Berkovich and Johnson work outside. Donnelly just kind of stays out of the way. Five seconds, jump ball, Miley and Johnson. Now Coach Judd Heathcote is saying he crossed the midcourt line on his dribble, therefore he'd get another five seconds to go. Be careful of a tee, Judd. Talking to the expert there. Yep, yep. <laughs> Johnson has the height advantage, but the tip, it'll be another jump ball, this time Charles and Gilbert. Now Gilbert has the leaping advantage. Well, well, these are two sky hooks going up here this time. If the fans would just watch how high they get off the court on this jump ball. That's a smart play by Charles. He knew he couldn't make a play, so he just went down and smothered the ball. That's three smart plays last minute. Watch their feet, how high up they get. Alex Stover on it. Next with the ball, Indiana State trails by nine. They've got to put it up. Oh, they got plenty of time, though. Good defense by Charles. Foul is on who? Charles of Michigan State. Four on Charles. Vincent, Charles, Kelser, all with four for Michigan State. Johnson picked up three in the first half, is clean the second half. Larry Bird really hasn't had a shot blocked tonight, but he's had a lot of shots altered by real good defense inside. Charles doing a good job, Kelser, and when Jay Vincent was in there, he was doing a good job. Here comes the left hand up there, he must concentrate, these are big foul shots. You gotta put them over the front rim. It drops home, he is two for five tonight, 16 points for Knicks. That one was a crier, it bounced all around the rim. Johnson comes back to the ball and meets it so well. Oh, Larry Bird! He just reached out on knee hook and grabbed that one. Good head fake on Bird. Berkovich thought he was going to stay inside. He went outside. Steve Reed from 20 is short. Bird keeps it alive. Gilbert, foul, Charles. Ron Charles, fifth. Personal foul, he is disqualified. Boy, did Gilbert get up in the air that time. The odds are he will not make this first foul shot, but let's see. Larry Bird really upset with himself. The ball slipped right out of his hand. Here we're going to go see him battling for the rebound. I said his shots have been altered tonight. He recognizes. Look at how high up he put that ball. Here comes Gilbert. Head almost equal to the rim. Takes it up. Gets fouled on the way up. 
Charles leads with seven points. He contributed with some key baskets and key saves. And Jay Vincent, limping, number 31, returns for the Spartans. He has four fouls. Here's that head fake by Bird. They thought he was going to stay inside, faked a little bit, good hands on the outside. It looked like a professional ping pong play there when he got that ball. Hey, Dick, you really hit it on the head when you said Jay Vincent lift in. I think that leg probably wearing down a little bit on him, and he can hardly run down the floor. Look at him. You still have to shoot free throws. It's still 15 feet away in all legs, and Indiana State has not been able to hit their charities, and that's the difference in this game. Again, that was a one-on-one. One. Spartans running down the clock, 305, 304, 303, they lead by seven. Good pass. Forced the defense to run all the way across the court. Now, earlier, Kelter would have driven for that ball. That's not the intent. Here comes Magic. It, it looks like they're going into a complete sleep. Next, got a piece of the wrist of Berkovich. And for Carl Next, he leaves the game with five. And that is a critical loss to Indiana State. Following our basketball telecast tonight, it's been a very big day for all of us around the world. The signing of the Mideast Treaty celebration. Yet caution, David Brinkley reports for NBC News immediately following the final buzzer. Next leaves with 17 points. He'll be back next year. Little consolation at this moment. Been a great run for this ball team. Still some time left, 2.43. But the fouls have really been critical. Number 20, Rich Nemchik from Hammond, Indiana, Jr. It'll be local news following our telecast, and that will be followed by the NBC News Special on the Mideast Peace Treaty. Oh, a rare miss by Berkovich. A big break for Indiana State. Well, that ball went up there off the high. Larry Bird way outside, can't hit. Great rebound by Kelsey. What a rebound. And you can hear Magic hollering in the back. Great, Greg, and he spotted him just with a sound as opposed to visual. Turnover, Donnelly. Oh, Judd's going crazy. Well, what happened that time, Berkovich changed direction, and Donnelly got caught high with the ball. We pause briefly for station identification. This is the NBC Television Network. Bob Heaton with an air ball. So Indiana State, everyone trying so hard, but the pressure all on the shoulders of the Sycamore. Two minutes left. Michigan State took the lead at 9-8 early in the game, have not relinquished it, built up a 16-point lead. Indiana State carved it away and pulled within five, but Michigan State leads by seven and only two minutes left. Indiana State has had its opportunities. Well, you'll never know when you miss those front ends of one and ones how many points that can mean for you. They've had to miss at least three or four. Berkovich gives the Spartans an eight-point lead. They're only one minute, 59 seconds away from the first ever National Basketball Championship to a Michigan University. The best they did was years ago when North Carolina State, North Carolina, led by Frank McGuire, beat them in triple overtime. That was in the semifinals. Yep. They had jumping Johnny Green. Deep inside with a left-hand prayer, and he gets it back. That was almost the kind of shot he beat Arkansas with. Gilbert inside. Great play by Johnson. He stole the ball. The Magic Man pulled out the rabbit. He has not thrown the ball away at all tonight. He hadn't had a chance to make spectacular passes. Foul out of desperation by Reed of Indiana State, his second. They've got to foul somebody, but all the guys out there handling the ball can shoot these fouls. Now, here we see the play. Inside, Alex Gilbert has it right where he'd love to have it. Magic comes down over the top, just strips him of the ball. Light of hand. Light of magic man. Yep, he has Houdini hands. Real good free throw shooters in the game right now, handling that ball from the game space. 
The Spartans now lead by nine. Jerry Donnelly looking for his 12th point. And Dick, we talked about unsung heroes when this game started. Jerry Donnelly's been a man since a big clutch shot. Yeah, those four shots from the outside were just at the right time. 126 left. Sycamores have to score and score in a hurry. Nemchek banks it in his first basket. Time out. Indiana State with a score 63, 56, and 117 left. That's how much time left. Desperation for the Sycamores. Take us into the huddle with Judd Heathcock. What's he telling us, Spartans? He's saying spread it out. Let's try to get on the foul line. Don't give him any three-point play. Stay in the tight two-three zone. Circle around Larry Bird. Let them try to beat us from 20 feet out if they get the ball. And I'm sure he's telling no silly fouls. They want that clock to keep moving. Jay Vincent can hardly walk out here. That leg is really bothering him. To get the ball to the man, they want to be in control. Irvin Johnson. No one should feel sad for Indiana State if they don't win. They've done a magnificent job. They're a great ball team. Foul is on Reed. That stops the clock with 106 left. And sends Donnelly to the line. Reed's third foul. It's not a bad move. Try to steal the ball but get the foul. They can't afford to let the clock keep moving. Joe Hodges, Judd Heathcote. One of the sad aspects of this tournament. 40 start and 39 lead losers. Only one can smile for the months ahead. I think we'll get a good smile from Judd. The whole, the whole tournament is very intense. He doesn't fool around with the ball game. He makes sure he hasn't won before he makes any substitutions. Donnelly now has 13 points. And Michigan State leads by nine. Reed hits a long 25-footer. Time out of time. Indiana State. What happened there, Dick? Larry Bird grabbed the ball right out of the basket and called time. Donnelly said, hey, you can't get away with that one. Larry Bird, and I know a lot of fans who have watched him all season long are saying, oh, if he had just had an average shooting game, we'd be national champions. But again, he has played under such tremendous defensive pressure. Michigan State, Magic Johnson, Greg Kelso, they were the world's fans tonight. Now yeah, they're the best team we saw the last month of this year. There's no question about it. They were on an uptick. They hit a little drought in the middle of the season. And then they were off to the races. Now let's give some credit to their league, too. I think that's what made them such a competitive team. The Big Ten this year had some incredible competition. Maybe the greatest year a conference has ever had in the country. Bill Hodges, he graduated from Marion College in Indiana in 1970 after four years in the Air Force. An assistant coach, and let's pay tribute to those men, too. The assistants, often overlooked. They struggle. They work for years and years behind the head man before they get their chance. Under adversity, Hodges replacing the physically ill king, and he's had a great year. And Judd Heathcote, his counterpart, several years at the University of Montana. A surprise pick by Michigan State. The coup de grace. Michigan State now starts to celebrate. Offensive foul, I believe, against Larry Bird. And now the Spartans starting to show the victory smiles. Bill Hodges knows it's all but over. He trails by nine, 49 seconds left. Oh, a tremendous collision at midcourt. Wow. And what's the call? The call is against Nemchik of Indiana State. He's the one that had the offensive foul, too, but they're battling out there, and Indiana State had to take the gamble out for that steal to allow the long pass. Wow. They're going to call two fouls on that again, but Double. he stepped in, and they really hit each other. I'm pleased no one's hurt. There's 48 seconds left, and there comes the cry out for Michigan State Spartans. They're number one, and they are number one. And they their number the one player, Urban Magic Johnson, wins for his university $5,000. $1,000 during the regular year, $5,000 in this championship game. Very few can argue that that sophomore, I, I, I said today, someone asked me, if I could put a name on the back of his uniform, I would write joy. The joy for this game, the joy that he has brought his fans and anyone who loves basketball. 
as Joe said, who's the best ball player in the country, pro, college, or high school. Reed comes back to hit two from That's going to be a technical foul. It's going to be a technical foul. What happened? Larry Bird slapped the ball away from Magic Johnson while he was out of bounds. It's automatic technical foul. Hey, you have to pull all the stops when you get here. What a great ball player Larry Bird is, but this was accurately called right here. Now watch it. The ball is Isn't that Magic's out of bounds. Isn't that normally a warning first on that when you break nope, the plane, Billy? No, no, no. That's a roll call. That's a good call by the official yep. because Bird was very quick in his move. A little frosting for Magic Johnson. Michigan State 69, Indiana State 60. Johnson leads all scores with 22. Bird 19 for Indiana State. Well, got the national champs, Michigan State. Look at Urban Johnson. He turned to the official. Too big is out saying. <laughs> All right, he, hit, he wants two. That's Magic says, I'm not one, just one. That was intentional. Larry Bird telling his teammates, hey, we got nothing to be sad about, but let's keep playing solid ball here. You don't want to turn the game into a farce. Can we say Al McGuire, two stars were just a bit too much for one? Well, as I said earlier in the show, the third man in the ring was the deciding factor, Greg Kelsey. Yeah, Johnson against Bird, both legitimate All-Americans, both big men. A new evolution of the game, the big man with the great passes, but Michigan State also had a great Nelson. And you know, thinking back to last year when Kentucky went all the way through, this Michigan State team was a year younger, but they almost knocked off the Kentucky Wildcats last year in that regional. Kentucky beat them by only three, 52 points. I also want to thank Larry Bird for giving us so many thrills this year and being a perfect gentleman. Gilbert has this point, point 18 seconds. Johnson fouled by Bird as those two great stars <laughs> collide. Well, before this game started, Matt, oh, what a sight right there. Yeah, what they're saying, play to our potential. Play to our potential. That was said. I think they said with their eyes, we did it. We did it. They're going to get their rings and their wristwatch and be prouder for the rest of their lives. Those memories will be a lot bigger than any kind of momentum they'll ever give them. There's Judd breaking out the smile. Not yet, not yet. There he is. There's 15 seconds. No, they're no he's him. not. They're getting him. No, he's got 15 seconds. Let's see if we can catch a smile, huh? Urban Johnson tacks on two more. He has 24. A reminder of our award ceremony following the next They chant that cry on every campus in every sport. Everyone wants to be number one. But only one can make it. And Larry Bird, a great star, congratulates the victors. Dick, I enjoyed work with you and Billy. Same here again. Urban Johnson leads his Michigan State team to the final score, 75-64. The first ever national basketball championship for the Spartans of Michigan State. And Brian Gumbel has the game star and his head coach, Judd Heathcote. Thank you, Dick. I am with two very, very happy, happy people here, Magic and Judd. Magic, not only were you a leader on offense, I thought you did a great job on Larry Bird in the zone denying him the ball. Yes, uh, Coach uh, gave us a good game plan to go against Larry Bird. And all we had to do was go out and do it. And if we did it, he said we would win. That's what we've done. Judd, I know you didn't count on Larry Bird hitting as poorly from the field as he did. Were you surprised they didn't try to force the ball into him more? Well, I think that we had a man and a half on him, Brian, and uh, it was tough to get it in. I thought maybe they could have gone to him a little more, 
but I think they worked the ball. Hey, this was a tough, tough game for us. Uh, they gave us all we wanted, and we're just very, very happy to win. Were either of you surprised at how close the officials were calling the ball game early on? No. Well, I sure was, but maybe he wasn't. <laughs> I wasn't, because uh, they wanted to set the tempo for the game, and they didn't want it to get out of hand. So You seem to lose the rhythm a little bit at the 15-minute mark in the, second, in the second half when Kelser left the ball game. He sat on the bench for seven minutes, and uh, then you then you, you got outscored 14-4. to four. What happened? Well, we might have uh, become a little too conservative, and yet without Gregory in there, we have a tough time running our offense. So uh, we're just glad we could hang in there, and the Magic Man was super as usual and kept us in there. Let me ask two final questions. The rumors say that you've played your last college game and that you're heading away from Michigan State. You first. I can't really say. I, I haven't said that at all. Uh, everybody's just saying that. As far as I know right now, I'll be back. But, uh, you know, everybody got the room I'm leaving, but I haven't said that. John, how about you? Those are just rumors, Brian, just rumors. Right. Gentlemen, congratulations. Super Bowl game. Thank you. I, that picture. Let's go back to Dick. Okay, Brian tells it all. You feel it. You feel it with him. He's a great competitor. You know, in Terre Haute, when I first met him, I said, Larry, wouldn't you rather lose a ball game before you go into the NCAA? He says, Coach, I don't want to lose any ball game. He's such a fierce competitor. He's a winner. Okay, let's recap it. Billy Packer, your impressions. I think it was an excellent basketball game. The zone by Michigan State was the key. You never could get an easy shot. Right now, let's go back to Brian Gumbel. Okay, Dick, thank you very much. I'm standing with a very disappointed Bill Hodges who concluded a super season in the, in the worst way for him. You had trouble penetrating the Michigan State zone, didn't you? Well, first of all, Brian, you're wrong. I'm not disappointed. The Lord blessed us with a great year, and I'm extremely happy with that. I think it's not a matter of how much trouble we had with our zone. It's just, you know, if we'd hit our free throws, it would have been a heck of a basketball game. Uh, yeah, we had a much better free throw percentage than that, and uh, if it had been tight, you know, uh, and we'd had a chance to win, I think maybe we would have. But uh, we can't be disappointed. Uh, our guys played great all year. They never gave up, and I don't think they ever will. Bill, congratulations to you. We'll look for you back here again next year. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you, guys. I appreciate your coming on. Let's go back to Dick. So ends this classic in Salt Lake City, 15,410. See Michigan State University Spartans. Rally from a 5-4 season start, win 21 of their last 23, and take home the championship gun blood. For Brian Gumbel, Billy Packer, Al McGuire, Dick Enberg, good night from Salt Lake. Promotional fee has been paid to NBC by United Airlines. United is building the largest airline in the world around you. Fly the friendly skies. The executive producer of NBC's National Collegiate Basketball Championship, Don Olmeyer. Congratulations, gentlemen. Tonight's telecast finally produced by George Finkel and astutely directed by Harry Coyle. Technical director, Bill Toby. Associate director, our producer, Kenneth Edmondson, and the associate director, Randy Wands. Feature producer, Don McGuire. Remember, Saturday, April 7th, 2 o'clock Eastern time, Major League Baseball returns. Milwaukee at New York Yankees or Philadelphia visit St. Louis. Next Saturday at 3.30 and Sunday at 2, it's LPGA action with the top women golfers at the Kemper Open. And Sports World Sunday at 4 Eastern time features the Golden Gloves Association of America Tournament of Champions. Now following local news, stay tuned for NBC News special on the Egyptian, Israeli, Peace Treaty, and the Johnny Carson Show. Follows on NBC.